You know what's interesting about The Last Crusade? What? Steven Spielberg is on record as saying that he made this movie for two reasons. One, mm-hmm. to fulfill the three movie obligation that he had made to George Lucas. Oh, that's perfect. That's Not great. just friends. Yep. Contractually bound together. <laughs> oh, nice. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> and two, to atone for the criticism that he received for the previous installment, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. But here's the thing, Mason. Go on. This is... Obviously, and people agree, the worst one. In oh, the James! So you think? How long are you going to please keep this? leave a like? How long are you going to keep this bit going? Is the question. <laughs> Look, we we joke. You joke. I do joke. Yeah, mm, but you shouldn't joke about this one. No. Let me tell you this. Admittedly, this is the first one I saw in the cinemas as a kid. Sure. But man, this is the good stuff. It's this one's incredible. Wow. The action is so so much fun and smooth and like everything's perfectly choreographed and it's funny yep. and everybody's on the top of their game like mm-hmm. all the you know Harrison Ford and and Jonathan Rhys Davies and the guy that plays Marcus Brody <laughs> whose name I don't have in front of me and I It's on the screen. Up. It's right there. Everybody's doing great. It's Sean Connery as Henry Jones. What a what a what a great I tell addition you what, of the dynamic. That pairing yeah. and obviously it's a callback because we talked about in previous videos that Spielberg wanted to direct a Bond movie and George Lucas came up with this idea. But that pairing of those two together, mm. I'd never seen Sean Connery as a kid. This was my first exposure to him. Mm. So I was like, oh, this is like just a fun old guy in movies. Right, uh-huh. I had no idea that... Like, he's never done anything this funny. Yeah. You didn't know he was in Zardoz <laughs> before this. I didn't. You didn't know he was in that that one where he's a moon cop? No. A, a moon cop man? High moon. Yes. There isn't another movie where he is used like this. And they've have they never t- reteamed they never reteamed again, right? No, well, there would have been some crossover in the Jack Ryan movies. Oh, of course. But they're not in the same Jack Ryan That's movie. That's right. Hunter Red October and Clear and Present Danger. Yeah. And Patriot Games. I just love that dynamic of first of all, there's twelve years between them, which mm. is insane. Right. But it works. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. Who cares? But also I get the sense that Henry Jones Sr. could have had a kid at twelve, so <laughs> whatever. That's true. Or Sean Connery could have at the moment. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. yeah. But I just love like this kind of running gag of Indiana Jones is just doing the most amazing shit mm. and really, really violent stuff. And his dad is either like unimpressed or completely oblivious. Right, uh-huh. There's the moment where they, you know, they get shot out of the sky and they've crashed and the plane's circling around to machine gun them. And his dad's like, they're trying to kill us. And Indiana Jones <laughs> is like, I know. Like he's just like yeah. he just had an absolute gut Man. full. I also love that, you know, just, and it, and it's true for a lot of father-son relationships that Indiana Jones has had this massive storied career and he's gone around the world in an era where that wasn't common. He's had the most incredible... Mm. He's fought the Nazis. He's fought, you know... uh, He saw God, sort of. He saw God. But then when his dad is back in the picture, he regresses to, like, a (laughs) teenage boy. Like, Dad! (laughs) Dad, duh! I'm doing my own stuff, Dad! Well, let's talk about that because in the opening of this, Mm -hmm. there's an origin where we see River Phoenix yes. as a young Indiana Jones. Mm. They work together on Mosquito Coast and Harrison Ford was like, get this guy because he, he looks a lot like me and I like mm. him in general. And then we see him get his whip, his scar, his fear of snakes, his hat. He steals his entire look and personality from another guy. Now, do we know who that guy is? Like, a, does, is he canonically a, a, I'm sure a, he's a, in a noted comics guy? And yeah, probably. Whatever. He's, not, he's not Ravenwood. Right? No, he's not Ravenwood. Okay, right. I think initially, maybe in some drafts, he was going to be. I think you you do that in a worse movie. Mm. Like, none of that should work. Well, none of it should work, but I think the reason it does work, uh, and it hasn't in most subsequent movies that do a similar thing to this, is that it is, it, it is played kind of tongue-in-cheek, and it's also over in 15 minutes. Whereas yep. future movies, including perhaps Solo... Or, 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 Perhaps. or, you know, any any other movie that we see the origin of a character's iconic look or their whole deal, that's the entire movie. Yep. I think if they made this now, they couldn't make it these bloody days, I tell you that, it, it would be young Indiana Jones gaining all those things over two hours. Yes. And we'd, he, we'd only be complete Indiana Jones right at the end. Now he's Indiana yep. Jones, ready for more adventures. Well, I kind of wanted him doing his adventures <laughs> at the start, but thanks for wasting my time for two hours. You know what would happen? Yes. A swordsman would appear in front of him, you'd get a wry smile, he'd reach for his gun, and it would cut the credits. Oh my God, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you know, there'd be a running gag where he's doing a bunch of sword fights with dudes, and then at the end he's like, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> like it's an this infomercial. Is this, is, this sucks. <laughs> hey, Junior, have you heard of guns? <laughs> anyway... What I like about these first three movies, and you can see it looking back on them, you do get 
a different side of Indiana Jones in each one. Like, obviously, the first one is the introduction. You've got the archetypes of the character is built and you find out he's an adventurer and a bit of a buffoon and a cat and he's kind of smart and maybe he needs glasses, maybe he doesn't. We'll talk oh, yeah. about it. Second one, which is a prequel, you go back a little bit when he's a complete grub. Just oh, an yeah. absolute maniac. A menace. <laughs> just on a big tear. Mm. And this one... <laughs> like a... <laughs> Like an Australian tourist <laughs> yeah. in anywhere other than us. Just an, an Australian tourist in Bali, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Just being a menace, tearing up the landscape. And then you get to this one and you do get that kind of more responsible, studious side of him. But then you find out more about his origin with his dad mm. like by his side. Uh-huh. It's wonderful added depth. And you know what else what, what else we get in this one? We get just great mystery solving and a bit of, you know, that that we got that archaeology. We get the yeah. Grail Diary, which I loved as a kid. I, just, yeah. I bet you can get a replica of that now and it's $200. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, we get the mystery solving. We get the every action sequence is incredible. We yep. get just a bunch of great supporting characters. Anyway. Just one of the more minor action sequences yeah. is where they escape on the motorbike and he just jousts the dude. Yes. And the other guy, he sticks the, the flag in the spoke and the bike flips yeah, yeah. and his dad just looks at him just like kind of unimpressed. When he jousts the dude though, he does give him a look of <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that's, this is cool actually. I love I'm this kind of stuff. Up to my ki- I'm warming up to my kid. There is a line in this where, where uh, Henry Jones Sr. goes like, You left just when you were becoming interesting. Which is such a dad thing to say, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, but like, you know, th- this movie goes from from that to a action sequence on a blimp to the yep. the um, dog fight to a tank chase. Yeah, God. incredible. And as you mentioned, like it being the funniest one, mm. the Marcus Brody Henry Senior dynamic is great. Uh-huh. They feel like old friends. They've got like barely any scenes together, but, but they got secret handshakes. They got secret handshakes. I love that joke of Indiana Jones explaining in detail about how Marcus Brody can blend in in any culture on earth and you'll never find him. He's just this international, like, incredible man of mystery and it just smash cuts to him bumbling around right, the Right, exactly, market. yeah. Like, uh, just a guy who's like, well, maybe they'll understand English if I talk louder. Yeah, exactly. The bit where his dad, like, shoots up the tail of the plane. Mm, they got a son. Incredible. Exactly. No ticket. The seagull bit. It's just, there's not a second wasted of this movie. Oh, my God. That tank sequence. Mm. My goodness. Oh, the bit where he shoots three guys in, in a <laughs> row. Amazing. And he's just like, huh, yeah. This has got one of what's considered to be the best stunts of all time, where Vic Armstrong, Harrison Ford's stunt double, leaps from the horse onto the moving tank. Mm-hmm. No wires, no green screen. Just looks like a really hard fall yeah. from a horse to a tank. Yeah. Really big fan of that. And the trials, that whole sequence of semi kind of realistic booby traps where you're like, yeah, I guess this could kind of work in the Mm -hmm. force perspective and whatever. They really sell that idea. And I love how he finally gets to the knight and the knight's like, oh, thank goodness you're here. You're so brave and you have vanquished me in battle. Now it is your job to look after the grail. And he's just like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. (laughs) Look, there's a lot to explain and I can't because it's been 500 years. I've got, look, I'm pretty sure in future I've got to sleep with a lot of women who are going to betray me in some way. So... (laughs) We can wrap this up real quick. I'll just take the one I know. I'll just take the grail that I need. She, okay. She's great also. Elsa, Real, Schneider. Elsa really good. Rewatching this as an adult, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course she's a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> she's just got to look about her. And it's the third one, so of course the love interest is going to betray him at this point. And it's a Bond trope, but you it, know, at this point. Yeah, but a gotta... kid, I'm like, I had no idea. I'm like, oh, pretty lady. <laughs> pretty blonde lady. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, very well put together. Great uniform <laughs> in this blonde lady. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. She's a what? <laughs> I think also... Like, that Donovan death is really good because that kind of harkens back to the first one. Yeah. You know, that kind of horrific death and the advanced ageing and there's some CGI morphs kind of in there as well, coupled with, you know, some, you know, real practical effects that you see. I also think that, like, if you took any of those other grails, that's useful. That's a great thing to, like... Oh, assassination tool. An espionage, a tool of espionage, yeah. Mm-hmm. Make, a, make a horse drink it at a party if you're a weird rich guy. Sure. <laughs> Would it work on a horse, though? I don't know. Because I, I, I kind of feel like like the Ark of the Covenant. Like, mm. maybe it's your intent is also. Yeah. Like a horse drinking from the from the Holy Grail. That probably hasn't, you know, probably isn't expecting eternal life. <laughs> so, probably you know, not. So. I'd imagine, yeah. yeah. My goodness. I also, uh, watching this again for the, you know, the thousandth time. I think mm. this is the one I rewatched the most, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Probably this and Temple of Doom I've probably seen the most. But I, I love the idea from, like, the knight's perspective that this pack of weirdos, like, run in 
set off all the traps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of them drinks the wrong grail. He just watches that unfold. The other guy takes it and he goes, you can't get it out of here. And he goes, right, got it. They go out. They try to leave with it. This is his perspective. Yeah, right. Cause an earthquake. They drop it into the earthquake. The whole building goes <laughs> under and they leave. Yeah. Like, what did he even do any of this for? He could have just dropped it down a pit. That's tr- <laughs> you know? absolutely right, yeah. They really, like, wrecked his shit. Do you reckon he's like... I gotta go get that now. <laughs> I gotta go go down there and find it. Lousy immortality. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I don't know. Is it lost to time? But even that, like that last connection that you get with him and his dad, mm. just a really good touching moment. I think the emotional stakes of this, on top of like everything else, which is done perfectly, it really elevates it. I feel above the other ones. Yeah, like you. That it gives it's such a believable relationship. Like they great, really yeah. sell it, and even the conversations are interesting. Like the conversation on the blimp that you mentioned. Like that's interesting. That's yeah. that's good stuff. Mm. I know I said earlier that like this was the bad one, but I was joking, Mason. This oh, is actually. Oh, oh. This is a, I don't know if you picked up. I picked up on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah This yeah. is a this is a mm. good one. I'm gonna do a big complaint though. I've got oh, two, oh wow. I've got two big complaints. Wow. R.I.P. The comments. <laughs> I know, right? River Phoenix's hair is not era appropriate. Mm, it's true. It's very floppy 90s, isn't it? Mm, they like it. Love the casting. They did want him to come back for young Indiana Jones. He obviously did pass away in the mid-90s. But yeah, obviously he wasn't going to do young Indiana Jones. But, sure. You know. It was too edutainment. It was too edutaining? Yeah. And the other one is the moment where they're going through uh, the underground uh, the tunnel in Venice mm-hmm. and it's all petroleum. Oh, yes. And he's holding a big fiery torch. Mm. And there's a moment where you just see fire just falling off into the <laughs> into the, into okay. the petroleum. And I'm like, that's not realistic, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I was well, mad about it. Seems that way, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But other than that, no. But how about this? Uh-oh. Every week, we're looking at these and we're going, are these fashion specs? <laughs> yes. Does he need glasses? Mm, yeah. Okay. So what does he do in this movie? You, I, I was not paying thorough attention. Mm-hmm, Perhaps mm-hmm. I need bloody glasses. But you have, obviously. You've, yes. you've, been, you've been watching diligently and taking notes. So how does he use glasses in this movie, James? I'm hoping we get more information about this next week because I don't feel like this helps. He only uses them as a professor at the start. Okay. And then there's a moment where he goes to meet Donovan and he puts them on to, like, inspect the different things that he's looking at. It's a very appropriate use of mm. reading glasses. So, so obviously there, I mean, that second example would be reading glasses because he needs to look at stuff close up. Yes. But if he's wearing them in a classroom setting, exactly. maybe he needs to look at the students to see if anybody's acting up or putting pervy messages in their eyelids, yeah. for example. So what are they then? Yeah, maybe they, they don't look like bifocals. I was going to say, are they bifocals? Maybe it's a subtle, I don't know, could you do that back in the day? I would have mm. thought bifocals back in the day to be a very distinct, like, slice down the middle. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. We'll find out more next week, I guess. I hope so. I still suspect fashion specs, though. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm suspecting. He's have not- you considered this? Mm. He's got two pairs. I haven't. Maybe he's short-sighted and long-sighted, <laughs> or whatever the reverse of that is. Maybe he's bad at distance and close-up, and he switches them out. Okay. They look the same. He went to Specsavers, and he got two pairs for $199. But why doesn't he wear them at other times then? Like why doesn't he wear them both at the same time? <laughs> yeah, that's your question. yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. But like, he doesn't need them for a joust. That's true. Or to shoot a man in the head, as Yeah, we but then saw. he's just guessing. <laughs> he's just, most of the time, he just assumes everybody around him is a bad guy. <laughs> and also, in this era, you shoot a bloke, no cameras. That's true. I didn't do it. Well, I guess he said he didn't do it. Yeah, so. exactly. You know what? I did do it, but prove it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Here's another thing I wanted to talk about fashion in general. Okay. His outfit, mm-hmm. at one point, it has the inclusion of a tie. A leather jacket how and you, a tie. How are you feeling about that? I don't love leather jacket and a tie. I mean, I think he carries it off. Because he's Harrison Ford? Because he's Harrison Ford. Because he he's young 46-year-old yeah. Harrison but Ford. But I think everybody who has dis- has been inspired by this movie to dress like that, they're not carrying it off. No. Also, I love that the way he decided the, the best strategy for infiltrating that castle was swap hats and jackets with Elsa and just walk in with a Scottish accent. And then headbutt a guy or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just walk in, man. <laughs> what are yeah. you doing? And she's going along with it because one, she's a Nazi and two, he's very handsome. She's like, I, sure. guess, I guess this handsome dumb guy is a fun <laughs> idea. Let's give it a whirl. The, the John Hamm's character in 30 Rock Syndrome. Absolutely it is. I also think, and I know it is a different hat for every movie, though it's technically supposed to be the same hat. There's debate about that. There's yeah. also a moment where his hat rolls back to him and you see inside of it mm-hmm. that is a fresh white lining. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's getting it relined. Maybe I don't know. You would back in the day. You would, I guess. Mm. I think this hat mm-hmm. is smaller. The brim is shorter. Yeah, you might be right, yeah. Mm, mm. Something to think about. Maybe he maybe maybe an edge got cut and he had to cut all the way around. You know? <laughs> 
Yeah. It's like, that's embarrassing and I can't. What am I going to sew that up? I have a big exposed stitch on there. Nope, I've got to take the edge off. Great point. Yeah. Man, I tell you what. Anyways, Mason, it's time for Indiana Jones in the trivia. Nice, I love that. This is a segment of the show where we do some trivia, Mason, including this one. 2,000 rats were bred for the production. Breeding them specifically was necessary as ordinary rats would have been riddled with diseases. I bet, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rumour has it, and you'll see this in a lot of places, that Harrison Ford was sick of his hat flying off in the tank chase sequence. Mm. He actually did a lot of his own stunts for this one because we know in Temple of Doom he was injured. That's right. But... Most of the stuff, not all he did in this. Like the tank jump he didn't do, for uh-huh. example. Uh, the rumour was that his hat kept coming off and he stapled it to his head. Uh-huh. Don't keep blowing off because I can't use the parts where it comes off his head. There's a behind the scenes, though, like fun gag where he's pretending to do it. Oh, but yeah. he didn't really put staples into his head. Because he needs his face for like being on camera and stuff. Being beautiful and so forth. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Uh, Pat Roach who you might recognise as the really big guy he fights in the two previous movies. Mm. He's actually in this movie briefly... They bred 2,000 pounds of Pat Roach. (laughs) That's right. You do see him. He's one of the guys running up to the blimp to stop it. Yeah, right. And there was going to be another fight where he fights Pat Roach. They did film it, but it was cut from this movie. Uh So he's technically in the first three movies. Right. Yeah. Uh, You know what's a fun little Easter egg in this? What's that? Hitler. That's fun, isn't it? <laughs> Just yeah. like that Kingsman yeah, movie. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, that's right, where he's revealed Avengers style at the end. Um, as, as an actor, how do you feel when you get your agent calls and is like, we need you for Hitler. Yeah. You look like Hitler, That's <laughs> what we're saying here. I mean, it's work. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, it's not a pro-Hitler movie, No, that's is it? true, yeah. yeah. That's right. So uh, this is a fun little detail that I actually just noticed this time around but after the tank fight you see Indiana Jones has a bloody lip and he's got a tank tread mark on his face okay yep uh-huh. uh huh because you know he gets his face pinned down to mm-hmm. it but when he goes into the temple and he gets the grail and he drinks from it you see afterwards like those wounds are healed like he's still got the marks like the blood but the yeah, right. the wounds are actually gone that's a good moment where Sean Connery's like I think my son died I should have been nice maybe right, yeah, and then yeah, he's yeah. like oh he's alright that's fine let's move on with this <laughs> I almost had to think about something for a second. Yeah. But now I'm glad I don't have to. Mm. Yeah, Salah, let's go. Um, and the last bit of trivia is, Indiana Jones in the trivia, I should oh, say, nice. is that this is Steven Spielberg's favourite of the Indiana Jones film franchise. Probably because it's the best one. Probably because it's the best one, I would say. Mm. But look, look, we're revisiting Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and we haven't seen Dial of Destiny yet. That's true. No one has, <laughs> as far as we know. I mean, that's basically 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Exactly. Currently, sure. But I don't disagree with that. This is peak Spielberg, Indiana Jones action. All the lessons and story beats and everything that was learned about this character, yes. this character in these <laughs> movies, it all comes together in this one. And I feel like if they were going to do another one, they probably should have done it in the 90s. We'll talk about it next week. But before we do that, Mason, box office for this, on a budget of $48 million, it made... $474 million. It was, again, the biggest movie of the year. It beat Batman internationally. Oh, wow, okay. And yeah. Batman was a big Batman movie. It was. One of the biggest Batman movies at the time. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Go on. We are coming back to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We'll be doing that next week. But if you do want to see it early, you can head over to Big Sandwich. Dot co. That's right. Well, they always go up there early. And we've got a bunch of other stuff there, including video game Let's Plays. We're going to do some Indiana Jones stuff there. Yeah. Also, there's bonus podcasts. There's movie commentaries. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That normally comes out Monday. That comes out ad-free on Sunday. We talk about the big movie of the week and all the movie news, don't we, Mason? That's right. BigSandwich.co. It's like that warehouse full of crates of cool stuff. Yep. All sorts of stuff. Yep. One of them has the... You open it and it's a box and God's in it and it... Burns shoots, your face off. Shoots yeah. a laser into yeah, you. And you yeah. love it. <laughs> and you love it. You love it. Yeah. You're like, wow, I remember that <laughs> from when I was a kid. You know? <laughs> Nostalgia. It's very powerful. Boy, is it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.